So we just got some new Max in January, which is a bit strange. Not only that, but they were just released via a press release. We got some new MacBook Pros and the Mac Mini as well. In this video, I'm solely focusing on the new MacBook Pros with the Mac Mini to be featured in an upcoming video. So here are not five, not 10, but 20 things you need to know. Number one, Apple actually posted a trailer on their website for all of these announcements. But unlike the previous trailers uh, that used to be 30 seconds to two minutes for uh, press releases, this was unusually long, 18 minutes long. In fact, it looked as if it was simply cut from an entire event. Ian Zelbo actually discovered that the ARKit files for the new Macs uh, that you can find on Apple's website were compiled in October 2022. And these are usually compiled about two weeks before an event, which means that Apple might have had an event scheduled for late October or early November for these new Macs, but for some reason that event got postponed and uh, this section was cut and then placed on the website in January. This theory is further backed by the fact that even the file name on the YouTube video that Apple posted shows 2022. As to why the event got canned, we don't really know, but according to all the rumors that we've seen, um, Apple likely had some production issues with these new MacBooks, especially when it comes to the chips, a reason why they ended up delaying the launch until January. Okay, number two, we've actually had a price increase. So in the US, we have the same prices as before, However, outside the US, more specifically in the UK, they are way more expensive. The 14 inch now costs 2,150 pounds up from 1,900, while the 16 inch now costs 2,700 up from 2,400. That is a significant increase. But okay, uh, what's actually new with these new MacBook Pros? Well, to start, uh, the battery life has actually been improved. Both the 16 and the 14 inch now offer one extra hour of battery life. In the case of the 14 inch, that means up to 18 hours of Apple TV movie playback compared to 17. And on the 16 inch, that means up to 22 uh, from 21. And according to Apple, the 16 inch is now their longest lasting MacBook ever. Although this isn't entirely true. It is only true if you take a look at this uh, from an Apple TV movie playback perspective. In fact, the longest lasting MacBook, if you take a look at it from a web browsing perspective, which is what most people do on their Macs, the longest lasting MacBook in that case would be the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro, which gives you 17 hours of web browsing compared to 15 on the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. Okay, and number five, we have 4K 240 Hertz support. And that is thanks to the new HDMI ports, which is HDMI 2.1 compared to 2.0 that we had before, uh, which used to max out at 4K 60. Now on the previous models, you can still use use the Thunderbolt ports to get, you know, a high refresh rate and a higher resolution than 4K, but now you can do it through the HDMI port. So 4K 240 is doable if you have a high refresh rate monitor. And so is 8K 60. Yes, if you have an 8K TV, uh, you can output, I don't know, Final Cut 8K footage or edits onto a full screen 8K TV. That is just awesome for content creators. Just like number six, the multi-channel audio support, which is also thanks to that new HDMI port. Essentially, by connecting your MacBook to your high-end 8K TV, for example, you can actually hear the audio in full surround sound through your TV's setup if you have uh, a surround sound system. Again, awesome for creative professionals. And number seven, something weird that I've noticed is that Apple has actually changed the weight of these new MacBooks a tiny bit. The 14 inch M2 Pro version has the same weight as before at 1.6 kilograms. However, if you get the M2 Max model, that will actually be heavier than the M1 Max 14 inch at 1.63 kilograms compared to 1.6. Now, when it comes to the 16 inch, the M2 Pro is actually heavier than the M1 Pro at 2.15 kilograms compared to 2.1 but the M2 Max is actually lighter than the M1 Max at 2.16 compared to 2.2. So it is very likely that Apple has also updated the cooling systems inside both the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pros. In the case of the 14 inch, that only applies to the M2 Max model, but that's, that's great. Uh, because the M1 Max 14 inch had a noticeable drop in performance compared to the M1 Max 16 inch. So this might not be as significant this year. In terms of the 16 inch, it seems like both models may have an updated cooling system, maybe even the exact same one, uh, as there's only a 10 gram difference between the M2 Pro and the M2 Max models, which is likely given uh, by the difference in the chip size itself. Number nine, we finally have a color matched MagSafe cable. Yes, if you buy a Space Gray MacBook Pro, it will now come with a Space Gray cable. 
which before it used to be silver for whatever reason. Apple updated this with the MacBook Airs, which were color matched, uh, but failed to update or retroactively update the packaging of the MacBook Pros. Well, now they have with the new models. And if you're indeed planning on getting a new Mac, we've partnered with Software Keep for some great prices on Mac and Windows software keys. Software Keep is a Microsoft certified partner, so they offer 100% genuine keys for software ranging from Parallels, Windows 11, Microsoft Office, Office 365, and almost every professional antivirus that you could think of. Help is always at hand with 24-7 human support available. SoftwareKeep uses no AI-based support to give you the best service. On top of this, you also receive assistance and tips with any of the software that you buy. And this is throughout the entire process, before and after your purchase. So if you're interested in keeping your devices safe or you just need some productivity tools for home or work use, you can use the code ZOT20 at SoftwareKeep.com for a 20% discount across their entire store. At number 10, we now have two times faster Wi-Fi on the MacBook Pros with Wi-Fi 6E as opposed to Wi-Fi 6 on the 2021 models. What this means is that the new models will also operate on the 6 GHz band as opposed to just 2.4 and 5 GHz. Uh, you will need a 6 GHz router for this, by the way, which means that devices connected to that dedicated 6 GHz band won't interfere with your devices on the 5 GHz and 2.4 and also get much faster speeds of up to 2.4 gigabits per second compared to about 1.5, which is what we had with Wi-Fi 6. But it's not just the Wi-Fi that has been upgraded, it is also the Bluetooth standard. We now have 5.3 as opposed to 5, and this is actually a pretty big upgrade. Bluetooth 5.1 improved locating devices, it made it more accurately and faster. 5.2 improved the sound quality and energy efficiency of connected devices, and 5.3 improves the power efficiency and reduces the interference. So 5.3, of course, comes with all the improvements of 5.2 and 5.1. So it's a big upgrade in this case, especially if you have the AirPods Pro 2s, which also come with Bluetooth 5.3. They would connect faster and the battery life would drain slower. But obviously, the biggest upgrade of these new MacBooks are the new chips, the M2 Pro and the M2 Max. So what you need to know here is that they're still based on a 5 nanometer manufacturing process. It is a refined 5 nanometer process, just like the M2 chip, but yes, so far, all versions of the Apple Silicon chips have been made on a 5 nanometer process. The 3 nanometer that was initially rumored for the M2 and then the M2 Pro and Max has been delayed once again until 2024, according to Ming-Chi Kuo. And only the M3 Pro and M3 Max chips uh, will feature the 3 nanometer manufacturing process. But let's talk about the actual performance improvements. So on the CPU side, we now have two extra CPU cores on both the M2 Pro and the M2 Max, so 12 instead of 10. However, these two extra cores are efficiency cores and not performance cores, and that is the reason why we get at one extra hour of battery life. On the GPU side, the M2 Pro now features 19 GPU cores up from 16, and the M2 Max features 38 up from 32. So basically just like in the leaks. Shout out to Mark German for being spot on with these. In terms of some numbers, Apple claims up to a 20% faster CPU performance on the M2 Pro versus the M1 Pro, 30% faster GPU, and uh, a total performance of 6.8 teraflops, which is very impressive for a laptop of that size. Now, when it comes to the M2 Max, Apple claims 20% faster CPU performance compared to the M1 Max, 30% faster GPU performance, and 13.3 teraflops. As a comparison, the PS5 has 10.3 and the M1 Max had 10.4. When it comes to real-world usage, Apple claims 20% faster motion renders with the M2 Pro compared to the M1 Pro, 20% faster Xcode compilation, 40% faster image processing in Photoshop, 30% faster grading in DaVinci, and 20% faster renders in Cinema 4D. Of course, we'll be putting all these claims to the test when we do our benchmarks starting next week, so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel to see those as soon as they come out. Apple has also updated a neural engine, which is actually a big upgrade, 40% faster, uh, which would improve the video and image processing quite significantly, according to Apple. But the big upgrade is when it comes to the RAM. So before we had 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte options, but now we also have 96. Most people would be fine with 16, but if you do heavy video work, 32 is needed. Uh, last year when we did our benchmarks, we didn't really see a major difference between 32 and 64, aside from uh, when you were doing 8K video editing. But for those who do need it, it is great that we do have that option. However, you need to keep in mind, if you do want to get 96GB of RAM, that is only available on the highest end chip configuration, so the M2 Max with the 38 core GPU option. The media engines have also been updated for faster encoding and decoding ProRes footage especially. The weird thing here is that with the M1 Max, Apple claimed that we're getting uh, twice the media engine 
engines uh, as compared to the M1 Pro. However, now they don't say that. So do we get the same number as with the M2 Pro? Uh, regardless, performance wise, the video encoding and decoding is still faster than before. One big thing to remember here is that uh, there's actually a pretty big difference when it comes to the amount of displays that you can connect to these MacBooks. So uh, with the M2 Pro models, you can connect to external monitors. However, with the M2 Max, you can connect up to four external monitors. And even though it might seem like these are essentially the same laptop, same internals, just a different size, that is not entirely true. We do get better speakers with a 16 inch, even though that's not technically advertised. We also have the longer battery life, larger trackpad, uh, better cooling and likely better performance uh, with the same specs as the 16 inch before could actually draw more power than the 14 inch. Again, this is not advertised, so do keep that in mind. Oh, and if you're planning on getting a new MacBook right now, you can actually get the 14 inch refurbished for just 1400 pounds as opposed to 1900, which is what it used to cost. So that is an amazing deal and can find even more amazing deals by tapping on the YouTube shoppable card down below. But yeah, way more videos to come. I'm Daniel, Simon Zenoff Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoff Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.